today we are going to discuss a transistor modeling re model a voltage divider biasing circuit in the previous class we were discuss the fixed bias common emitter configuration and its analysis today we are going to discuss a figure means today we are going to discuss a voltage divider biasing circuit that figure shown in 4a this a figure shown in figure a 4a is the actual connection circuit diagram then you have to transfer this circuit diagram into the its equivalent model first you have to identify the base identify base emitter and a collector and then transfer this transistor into its equivalent circuit as shown in the dotted line means that base collector and emitter is connected and then that beta times r e beta times r e and uh, uh, beta times i b is the current source and r not then its equivalent circuit is given by uh, this circuit and then you have to transfer the other components while you have to set that vcc to grounded when that vcc is grounded then this r b this resistance r c is start collecting from an emitter to collector and then is shown from the collector to the ground and then this current flowing through that emitter is known as an l or i not where the base resistance r1 and r2 is connected to the input side between the base and a emitter where r1 is connecting to the ground and r2 is already connected between the base and a emitter and a ground where this transistor is a bypassed capacitor that parallel combination of this effect of this transistor and a re combination is acting as a short circuit at a low frequency and mid frequency and then this resistance that emitter is directly connecting to the ground once transfer into this we need to determine the hybrid using this re model we need to determine the current gain voltage gain current gain a input impedance output impedance z not in the previous class we have discussed that a common emitter amplifier sorry fixed bias ce configuration this these two resistances are r1 and r2 in a voltage divider biasing circuit while finding the biasing voltages and currents then you have made that r1 is in parallel with r2 is treated as an rb hence here we can also classify these two resistance r1 and r2 are are parallel combination of uh, these two are equal to rb then this circuit when this r1 and r2 parallel combination are equal to rb then this circuit analysis is identical to that uh, fixed bias circuit what we are discussed in the previous session hence please go through this and then you have to follow the same procedure to determine that a voltage gain current gain input impedance zi and output impedance z0 and z0 dash next let us consider the a voltage divider by uh, uh, sorry common emitter amplifier with a unbypassed capacitor if you remove the capacitor then this resistance re is coming to the picture where this re is coming to the picture once again you have to transfer this identifying the base emitter and collector of a transistor and then transferred into this block with a base emitter collector and then you have to later transfer that other components rb rc and re from the wiring circuits where rc when this vcc is grounded there is a resistance lies in between that emitter and a ground there is a resistance lies in between the emitter and the ground and then when this component is connected then rc is connecting between when this is grounded then that rc is connecting between the ground and a collector and then this instead of this we have to connecting to this point emitter then in the other side that rb is connecting between the base and a collector then you have to determine the input impedance output impedance a voltage gain and a current gain of this circuit 
after drawing this a equivalent circuit means you must be write this circuit diagram and then no need to remember this entire circuit diagram only thing is you have to transfer out to transfer from a wiring circuit to the equivalent circuit means you need to remember this block where in the earlier class we are defer that resistance r not is in parallel with beta times ib where this r not is much much greater than that rc hence we are neglecting that effect of this r not on this circuit and then you have to reduce the complexity of that analysis then we are neglecting because this r not into rc this ratio of rc by r not is almost less than that 10% or a 0.1 hence we can neglect this r not and then you have to analyze this circuit if you want to analyzing this circuit diagram you have to find the input impedance of a circuit to find an input impedance of a circuit you have to define that a zb by definition zb equal to input voltage vi divided by input current ib to finding that input current ib or applying that kvl you have to excluding this portion that a biasing circuits you have to applying the kvl because this two are the parallel combination of a so, parallel combination that same whatever the voltage are applied at this point same voltage to appears at this point then if you are applying kvl to this path then you are going to get a vi equal to or vi minus ib times beta re and that current flowing through this uh, capital re this minus 1 plus beta times ib re equal to 0 if you are solving this circuit then this vi is equal to ib if i take an open then this beta times re plus 1 plus beta times re then that in by definition zb is equal to vi by ib then this is equal to beta times re plus 1 plus beta times re if beta is much much greater than 1 then this 1 plus beta is approximately equal to beta zb is approximated as a beta is common then re plus re because of this unbypassed <laughs> ce then that input impedance of a common emitter amplifier increased by the factor beta times r in the previous class we defined that zb is equal to when this bypassed means so going to get there is no resistance at this point then due to this uh, then that we are going to get only beta times r because of this a, a unbypassed re then that input impedance is increases by the factor beta times re if further approximated that if re is much much greater than re then zb is further approximated as beta times re this is one approximation then to determine this is the input impedance of a transistor in looking into the base emitter junction if you want to determine the input impedance of a transistor when looking into the considering that a biasing resistance as rb then this entire circuit diagram this entire circuit is replaced with an input impedance zb then zi is nothing but a zb is in parallel with rb means we need to find that input impedance of a, a common emitter or a sorry emitter for common emitter configuration we need to consider z i is nothing but a parallel combination of z b with r b next in the other side we need to determine the output impedance that output impedance is obtained by using input impedance is obtained by using this means you are looking into the uh, output impedance z naught is nothing but a v naught by i naught then how do you determine that output impedance when you are looking into the output impedance already is, there is a small correction here this is connecting to the this connecting to the rc grounded instead of this connection then this when you are looking into this z naught means when you are looking this this you are going to get z naught is approximately equal to rc 
directly because you have neglected that a value of R naught. Means when you are finding this Z naught already we specified you have to set V i is equal to 0. When this input voltage is set to 0, then the voltage means this a point means current source is acting as a a open circuited when you are looking into this there is no current is to be flowing through the tori hence that output impedance z naught is equal to rc this is another important equations next we need to determine the voltage gain that voltage gain of a transistor is given by amplifier ab is equal to v naught by vi where v naught by v what is v naught you have to from this circuit V naught is nothing but a voltage up across that RC. This is nothing but because that current direction is from that emitter to the collector opposite directions. Hence, that V naught is equal to minus I naught times RC, where this I naught is in the, the same direction of an IC. Hence, this is nothing but minus IC into RC. This is nothing but minus beta times IB RC, where that input impedance. Yeah. The another side is on input resistance Z i that V i, V i is by definition already we know that A from this equation that V i is equal to Z b into I b from this circuit V i into I b into Z b. Then that voltage gain A b is equal to that ratio of these two minus beta times I b R c divided by Z b times I b. These two components are various then the voltage gain a b equal to where Z b is given by actual expression is beta into R e plus R e then that current gain is given by b minus beta times I e R c voltage gain that beta times R e plus R e beta beta cancels then that current gain voltage sorry voltage gain is independent of that a transistor gain means that a current gain is independent of the transistor parameter beta it is nothing but a current gain of a transistor hence that is independent then that a voltage gain is directly proportional to the a load resistance rc and inversely proportional to the a input impedance of a transistor and hence we need to determine these parameters where this negative sign is indicating that a input and output are a are differed by an angle of my 180 degree means that uh, output signal is out of phase with an input signal. Another parameter is on a current gain of a current gain of a amplifier. Current gain is A i is equal to i naught by i i where I naught is the current flowing through the load resistance and I i is the current flowing due to the input signal. Then this given by I naught is in the direction of I c then this is equal to I c this is also equal to beta times I b. Then you are going to get A i is equal to beta I b by I i. To determine the complete current gain, we need to determine that ratio that I b by I i. This current gain I b by I i is obtained means you need to find this circuit. Then from this circuit analysis, we can write this the due to the voltage that current flowing through the I i and then there is a resistance R b and then this current means you have to replace this with input impedance of a transistor. That input impedance of a transistor is nothing but means you have to here in this circuit you have to replace that entire circuit this end the entire circuit with Z b then the current flowing through this is I b. Then this I i is I b is equal to total current I i opposite branch resistance R b divided by total resistance means R b plus Z b. Then the current gain A i equal to beta times R b divided by R b plus Z b. If you substitute that Z b value, you are going to get beta times R b 
divided by R B plus beta times R E plus beta times R E. Already we know that a current gain of a, a transistor is given by beta and then if your biasing resistance is connected or applied then this current gain is to be slightly reduced by this factor beta times r. If this R b is much much greater than these two components, if R b is much much greater than this beta times R e plus beta times R e, then this denominator is approximately equal to R b only. You are going to get that current gain is equal to the beta only. Because of this a biasing resistance, that current gain is reduced by this factor. Means, we derived an expression for a current gain sorry input impedance, output impedance and the current gain voltage gain and a current gain. If you know that either input impedance and output impedance of a amplifier, then using that we can able to determine A v and A i. Means, before start of an emitter follower, emitter follower is nothing but a common collector configuration. In a common emitter configuration, we are observed that one is bypassed and unbypassed C. Means, due to this, we already if you compare these circuits with an input impedance ZI, this is given by if you are in comparison, you are going to get this is beta times R e, this is beta times R e plus R e and output impedance Z naught is R c and output impedance here Z naught is R c and then current voltage again A v is equal to minus R c by R e and here that minus R c by R e plus R e and then a current gain A i is given by in this case beta times R b divided by R b plus beta times R e and then here beta times R b divided by R b plus beta times R e plus R e. Then comparing these four parameters that a input impedance is because of the turn bypassed a capacitor that input impedance is increases, output impedance almost identical same and voltage gain due to this resistance R e is reduces drastically because this R e is very small when the R e plus R e is larger and then that input impedance sorry voltage gain of an amplifier reduces drastically and then current gain is almost same it means current gain is also reduced due to the factor beta times R e. This is due to the when the turn bypassed capacitance means that is due to the a portion of the output signal is fed back into the input signal. Because of that reason that voltage gain reduced and current gain is also reduced and then input impedance is increases. Next let us consider the emitter follower. Emitter follower is also known as a common collector configuration. When you are discussing a transistor characteristics, we know that a common emitter configuration is defined as the common emitter and a common collector that input impedance is increases and output impedance is decreases. That is an advantage of this a emitter follower. Now, we have to first you have to determine the actual parameters and then later we will compare these parameters with the common emitter configuration. In a emitter follower that circuit shown in that figure 6 a that is the area output is to be taken across the emitter this R e in some of the textbooks this R e is also defined as an R l and then here that collector is directly connecting to the VCC and then this circuit is a, a fixed bias on emitter follower circuit. In this case you have to, to transfer this for the analysis of an emitter follower you have to transfer this. A, a circuit diagram into the equivalent circuit means you are identifying the base collector 
emitter and then this circuit is to be defined here given by this. After transferring that equivalent circuit, next is you have to transfer the external components, circuit components that is R B and R E. For this you have to set V C C is equal to 0. When V C C is 0, this R E is connecting between the emitter and a ground as shown in this figure and then R B is connecting between the base and a emitter sorry instead of an emitter it is connecting to the ground. For this circuit you have to analyze here once again you have to analyze that means we need to determine an input impedance, output impedance, voltage gain and current gain of a amplifier. From the figure 6 B we need to define that Z B is given by V i by I b in an emitter follower that input impedance is given by V i by Z b. Then how do you find means whenever you are to finding an input impedance here I already specified that to exclude this a exclude this R B. When you are excluding this R B, you are applying K V L to this path. From this circuit, we are applying this V I minus I B times beta times R E minus I E times R E is equal to 0, I E times R E is equal to 0. Then, let us solve for this V I is equal to I B into beta times R E plus already we know that I E is nothing but 1 plus beta times I B R E hence you are going to get an in Z B is equal to a V I by I B this is equal to beta times R E plus beta times R E means the input impedance due to the if you are comparing with respect to the other previous circuit that input impedance is same as that of your a previous circuit that beta times R E plus beta times R E. Next we need to determine the output impedance and other input impedance is if you are considering the biasing circuit then Z i is equal to Z b is in parallel with R b. Z b is in parallel with R b then you have to no need to substitute the equations here you have to after calculations you have to substituting these values into this and then you have to determine the input impedance of a circuit. Next we need to determine the output impedance. Here we have to determine the output impedance of a circuit output impedance of a circuit you have to set V i is equal to 0 instead of this output circuit means that Z naught is equal to V naught by I naught where I naught is nothing but I. When you remind the in the earlier circuit you have to set V i is equal to 0, but here in this circuit emitter follower output is follows the input signal. Then you need to determine output voltage V naught and the relation between this I. Output impedance is given by means we need to determine the a emitter current IE that IE is equal to emitter current IE equal to 1 plus beta times IB where this IB is nothing but from this circuit a input impedance this is nothing but 1 plus beta times V i by Z b. This is equal to V i by Z b. Therefore, because in this case if it is a emitter follower that output is approximately equal to input signal this also defined as a V i by I e. You are going to get this is equal to 1 plus beta times V naught by Z b. V naught by I b is equal to Z b by 1 plus beta. Your I A is equal to V i by this is equal to 1 plus V naught by I B is equal to Z naught by I B or I A is equal to I A is equal to 
1 beta approximately V i divided by beta times R e plus R e then this is equal to V i divided by R e plus R e. That emitter current is given by this I e is equal to V i by R e plus R e. Then from this output impedance Z naught is equal to this is the I e is the current flowing through this circuit. But this is the one way of determining this. We know that that current flowing through that is to be flowing through the emitter current is nothing but V i divided by R e plus R e. For this case, to determine the output impedance, you have to set V i is equal to 0. When V i is equal to 0, then what about this acting, this R b is acting as in this circuit, this R b is acting as a acting as a short circuit. When acting as a short circuit means this is the resistance like this, this is your beta times R e, beta times R e, then this is your beta times R e, this is the junction point, this is acting as a short circuit R b, then this is circuit like this. When you are looking into this path to determine the output impedance Z naught. Here this equation is to be determining that what is the current flowing through that emitter that is in terms of input voltage. When this V b beta is equal to 0, then these two circuits because this is a point, junction point, it is acting as a voltage divider biasing, then these two are in parallel, then Z naught is nothing but a beta times R e is in parallel because uh, that current, because we are determining that current flowing through this is and V i by R e plus R e, then that beta, because we are determining that beta value, this is the, what is the current flowing through this? I b, you know that the current flowing through this is I e. But I want to determine this current flowing to this R e is also B, I e, then this is to be denoted with R e and then this is combined together, you are going to get this is beta times I b is combined together with this I e, then that R e is in parallel with R e, because then your equivalent resistance is R e is in parallel with this R e. The current flowing through this is both the circuits is I e. When you are looking into this path, then that Z naught is a parallel combination of R e and R e. Hence, if you already we know that the input uh, resistance of the emitter is very small when compared to that R e, then Z naught is approximately equal to a transistor resistance, emitter resistance R e. In case of an emitter follower, that input impedance is higher due to that beta times R e and the output impedance is approximately equal to R e, then that output impedance is reduced to that R e instead of this R e. Next we have to determine the a voltage gain. Voltage gain of an amplifier A v is equal to V naught by A. What is V naught? V naught is given by I e times R e divided by V i. But we know that already I e is given by this expression that is nothing but V i divided by R e plus R e, then you are going to get V i divided by R e plus R e into R e by V i, this cancels, then that voltage gain A b is equal to R e divided by R e plus R e. This is the actual expression for the voltage gain that physically this voltage gain A v is equal to R e plus R e plus R e, where R e is very small when compared to this R e, that gain is approximately equal to 1. Therefore, this circuit is known as an emitter follower or a voltage follower. Always in your during your experiment, that R e where that voltage gain is always less than 1, it is not exceeds the value of that input voltage. Next, we need to determine the voltage current gain. Current gain is given by denoted with A i A is equal to I naught by I i, I naught is nothing but I e, this is by I i. What is I e? I e is, we already know what is I e? I e is equal to 1 plus beta times I b by I i. We need to define 
to what is the relationship between the IB and II. For this circuit, you have to use Okay, then we have to replace this circuit, this this replace this circuit with a Z B. Therefore, this is to be written as the current flowing through that I I and then this is your R B and then this is your input impedance Z B. Current flowing through this is I B. Hence, you are going to get I B is equal to from this circuit the total current divided by R B divided by R B plus Z B current gain A i is equal to 1 plus beta times R B divided by R B plus Z B. You have 1 plus beta is approximately equal to beta, then you are going to get beta R B. You have to substitute the value of Z B, you are going to get Z B plus R E plus beta times R E plus beta times R E. The current gain is given by this expression due to the a voltage gain. That means, if we are in the absence of the a biasing resistance, that current gain is given by simply 1 plus beta, because that when the input resistance, this absence of this R B means that a input voltage that I B is equal to the I I only, then that current gain is A is equal to 1 plus beta. Due to the presence of this resistance R B, then the current gain is reduced by this factor, but the approximately this is to be very close to that this value R B is higher much much higher than these two values then that beta is approximately higher current gain is approximately equal to the S transistor parameters. Okay. For this finally, we are conclude that in case of a current means we are comparing that uh, input impedance and a, a parameters of a common emitter and a common collector configuration. In case of a common emitter configuration, that input uh, resistance Z i is increases that is by beta times R e factor, a output uh, resistance is reduced because of that R e is in parallel with this R e combination and uh, a voltage gain A b is close to 1 and a current gain is close to beta or 1 plus beta. The because of this reason, a increasing an in input impedance and decreasing an output impedance. Because of that reason, this common emitter, common collector circuit or a emitter follower are used in power system. We know that already because in a power system, that resistance of a speaker is approximately equal to means that it lies in between a 4 ohms to 10 ohms means this convert even this 4 ohm resistance uh, delivers that a uh, higher a uh, wattage. Means finally, we are conclude this circuit have emitter follower uh, in uh, higher input impedance, lower output impedance, higher current gain. lower output sorry lower sorry voltage gain is approximately equal to 1 means whatever the input you are applied that same output is to be follows that input because of that reason this is used in a power system. Now, if you want a further increase in the power, then how do you proceed? In a single stage, we know that a current gain A i is equal to beta times R b by this. 
I want to increase further, I want to decrease further this input impedance. Then the Darlington is a invent is invented that a emitter follower means you have to cascade that a common collector configurations together you are going to get the higher input impedance and a lower output impedance that is shown in this figure. If we consider the Darlington emitter follower. Okay. Darlington emitter follower circuit as shown in that figure 7 a. Here are the two transistors are connected together back to back. Here that you are identifying the transistor terminals that is not this is okay. in a transistor identifying the transistor terminals you have to transfer first you have to write that equivalent circuit of that first transistor this is shown here means you have to transfer beta 1 uh, re and beta 1 i b 1 and re means in a transistor 1 that current flowing to the base current is i b 1 that transistor parameters beta 1 and then that resistance are re and similarly current flowing to that base is i b 2 and transistor parameter beta in the similarly, you have to draw the one more equivalent circuit of the second transistor means you have to transfer a transfer this into this transistor into the second. Now, you have to see that connection that emitter of the first stage is connecting to the base of the second. Therefore, in this circuit that emitter 1 is directly connecting to the emitter base of the second stage. That current flowing through this transistor collector current is C 1, current flowing through that collector current is C 2 and then current flowing through that a resistance R e is nothing but a emitter resistance. Here and then you have to use a biasing circuit that biasing uh, circuit is connecting to that R b this R b is transferred to the a base of B 1 to the ground. For this we need to find a input impedance Z b. For this input impedance Z b you are applying K v l to this path excluding that R b then Z b is equal to V i by I b 1. V i by I b 1 then you are applying K v l to that path you are going to get V i minus I B 1 beta 1 R E minus I B then from this circuit you are to going to get this is a minus I E to R E is equal to 0, but by definition V I Z B is equal to V I by I B 1 means you have to write that I E 2 in terms of I B 1 where we know that I e 2 is nothing but current flowing through the second stage emitter. This is given by I e 2 is equal to 1 plus beta 2 times I b 2. What is I b 2? Because if you are observed from this circuit, I b 2 is nothing but because emitter of a first stage is connected directly to the base of a second stage. Therefore, I b 2 is equal to I e 1. Hence, you are going to get I b 2 is equal to I e 1. What is I e 1? I e 1 is nothing but a 1 plus beta 1 of a transistor 1 into I b 1. If you substitute back into this expression, then you are going to get I b 2 is equal to this I e 2 is equal to 1 plus beta 2 into 1 plus beta 1 times I b 1 then that if you substitute in the above expression V i is equal to I b 1 beta 1 times R e plus I b 1 into 1 plus beta 2 into 1 plus beta 1 times R e. Actual input impedance Z b is equal to V i divided by I b this is equal to beta 1 times R e plus 1 plus beta 2 into 1 plus beta 1 times R e. If 
beta 1 is much much greater than 1 and beta 2 is also much much greater than 1. If these two factors are much much greater than 1, then 1 plus beta 1 is approximately equal to beta 1 and 1 plus beta 2 is approximately equal to beta 2. Hence, your input impedance Zb is equal to beta 1 times Re plus beta 1 beta 2 times Re. And also in this expression, there is a one more term, then we need to write this is nothing but minus Ib 2 times Re. If you substituting this, a small correction here, then plus 1 plus beta 1 times beta 2 times Re. You are going to get this term is equal to 1 plus beta 1 times beta 2 times Re. This is equal to beta 1 beta 2 times Re. If you are combining this Re into beta 1 plus beta 1 beta 2 plus beta 1 beta 2 Re. This is your an input impedance of a a Darlington emitter follower. For this circuit, then if you observe this circuit is too complex. In most of the books, they are made one more ap approximation and then they defined this beta 1 is much much smaller than beta 1 and beta 2. Then this is approximately equal to Zb is equal to beta 1 beta 2 Re and beta 1 beta 2 Re means if you are comparing with respect to this previous circuit emitter follower that gain is input impedance is increased by the factor that beta 2. That is an advantage of this Darlington emitter follower. For this circuit instead of writing this uh, circuit as shown in that figure 7 B, we can write an equivalent circuit because we have made an assumption that beta 1 is much much smaller than that beta 1 beta 2. If that uh, still you are assuming that uh, both the transistors are identical in this case, if the even if that uh, both the transistors are identical, that beta transistor parameters may be varies, but still you are assuming that these two are equal. If that beta 1 is equal to beta and then this is equal to beta, then we are defining that a new term beta d is nothing but a equivalent that is a beta 1 and beta 2, this is equal to beta square. Hence, your input impedance Zb is equal to beta d is common Re plus Re. Okay. If you are observing because of this assumption that Zb is simply a equivalent because you are combining together that both a transistors R1 and R2, so, uh, T1 and T2, then beta d Re plus Re. Then this circuit is further simplified. Further simplified because of that in such two stages you have to ap approximate means you have to simplify this circuit then this a two transistor cascade connections can be replaced with the equivalent uh, single stage equivalent amplifier therefore beta d is equal to means beta is replaced with beta d and then this beta d times re and then this re that current flowing through that re is nothing but a beta d times ib if you are observe here that current flowing through that a collector circuit instead of beta it is denoted with beta d times ib next further analysis are identical to that a common emitter sorry common collector configuration or a emitter follower. Only thing is that input impedance is increased by that factor beta d times Re plus Re. From this circuit analysis, we need to determine that input impedance Zb is equal to Zb equal to beta d times Re plus Re. Then Zi is nothing but looking into the from this point Zi is equal to Zb is in parallel with Rb. 
Next, that further analysis are identical to that your a previous circuit only. For from this circuit, we need to determine the voltage gain, current gain, and output impedance. For this case, you have to define the output impedance. Output impedance is given by that Z naught is equal to V naught by I naught set V i is equal to 0. When V i is equal to 0, when V i is equal to 0 means this is acting as a this is acting as a uh, R B is to be in short circuited then you are going to get this beta times beta d times R E is in beta d times R E because we are interested in the emitter current I, I E hence we have to define instead of beta d times I, I E this is beta times R E then you have to defining this circuit means you can say that equivalent resistance is R E because you have to make these two currents are equal then this R E is in parallel with R E, then that output impedance of a circuit output impedance this is given by this is beta D times R E and beta D times I E, then this is when you are looking into this beta D times R E and beta D times R E, when you are looking into this Z naught is nothing but a beta D sorry beta d terms is not coming over R e is in parallel with R e means that output that input impedance is further increased, but output impedance is of the a Darlington emitter follower is a similar to that of your a out in output impedance of a emitter follower only. Next is voltage gain a b in the other in the similar line voltage gain a b is equal to v naught by v i. voltage gain V naught is equal to V i, where V naught is nothing but I e into R e by V i. What is V i? V i is nothing but I b into Z b. I e is equal to 1 plus beta times I b times R e and then the work, uh, world input voltage is nothing but a I b into Z b. I b I b cancels. Then this is equal to beta times approximately equal to beta times R e where Z B is nothing but beta D, beta D times R E plus R E. This one, this one cancels this R E divided by R E plus R E. Means voltage gain of a output impedance and a voltage gain of a Darlington emitter follower are similar or identical. Then the current gain A I. Next, we have to determine the another important parameter a current gain. Current gain A i is equal to I naught by I I i. When I naught by I i, what is I naught? I naught is nothing but I e by I i. If this I e is equal to beta d times I b and divided by I i. Already from the previous circuit, we know that this current flowing through this is I i, current flowing through that resistance is R b and then this resistance is Z B, then that A i is equal to beta D into R B plus R B plus Z B. Means if you are observe here current gain is increased by that factor where beta D is equal to beta 1 into beta 2 is nothing but beta square. Means current gain is a square of that. Whenever that two transistors are connected in series that a current gain of a transistor is nothing but a product of that a current gains of a transistor. Today class we were discussed that is a common emitter amplifier and a emitter follower a single stage and a cascade. If you are observed from this emitter follower, because of this in a resistance of R e, that voltage gain of a transistor is decreased 
and input impedance is increases, output impedance is decreased. In case of a emitter follower uh, in a single stage and a cascade stage, a single both analysis are identical because you are shown that figure 7 c that except the term beta d, except the term beta d then that is equal to beta that current gain is a square of that beta and input impedance is a square of that R e plus R e in further increases and voltage gain and output impedances remains same. Thank you.